Well, I am back after taking a week off, and I return to the world of political commentary with a gigantic ball in the pit of my stomach and an overwhelming sense of dread because, once again, we are facing the prospect of a potential war or strike, definitely some sort of escalation with Iran, and this comes after the news that John Bolton either was fired or resigned, which, of course, in a lot of our eyes, diminished the prospect of war because John Bolton was openly a hawk on Iran. He wanted to overthrow the Iranian regime by 2019. So it was evident that getting rid of John Bolton made the prospect of war with Iran less likely. Now, his ouster reportedly happened after he clashed with Donald Trump over policy with regard to Iran. So Trump vocalized his intent to lift some sanctions on Iran in hopes that that would bring Tehran back to the table after he torpedoed the Iran deal. But of course, John Bolton didn't like that and he tried to persuade Donald Trump that de-escalation wasn't actually the right course of action and then this clash led to the ouster of John Bolton. So it seemed like everything was going semi-smoothly until you fast forward to Saturday when there were drone attacks on two Saudi oil fields and Houthi rebels claimed responsibility and this led to a disruption of almost half of Saudi Arabia's oil exports and when you consider the fact that Saudi Arabia produces a tenth of crude oil globally, I mean the ramifications for this are huge. The moment I found out that this happened I thought this could be what leads us to war with Iran if it is the case that the United States blames Iran for this. And of course, that's exactly what they are doing, even after Houthi rebels have claimed responsibility for this attack. Now, the dust has kind of settled, and we see the impact that this is having on global markets. Ultimately, this led to the biggest spike in oil prices within the last decade. And here in the United States, we love our oil. So, I mean, you can murder journalists, you can commit genocide, we're not gonna touch you. But if you fuck with our oil, that's when we all have to be worried about the prospect of war. And I'm not even gonna worry about cursing. This video will, in fact, be demonetized. So, you know, it's frustrating. This situation is absolutely terrifying. Houthi rebels claimed responsibility. And to give you some additional context, they're saying, look, we will do further attacks if Saudi Arabia does not withdraw because Saudi Arabia has now been waging a years-long genocide in Yemen. And I don't think that it's hyperbolic to describe what Saudi Arabia is doing as a genocide. So they're saying this is in direct retaliation to what Saudi Arabia has been doing in Yemen. And there will be more attacks if they don't stop doing what they're doing in Yemen. Now, of course, it is possible that... Iran had something to do with this in some way. Perhaps they supplied, you know, uh, the Houthi rebels with the drones or weapons, assistance in some way. But what we all knew and expected would happen is exactly what happened. You know, Iran is the main scapegoat. Secretary of State and Iran hawk Mike Pompeo is, in fact, blaming Iran even after the Houthis took responsibility. And Iran itself has denied any part. And again, I'm not trying to deny whether or not Iran assisted the Houthis here. What I'm trying to do is make the case that even in the event Iran did this, let's say hypothetically speaking, that Iran directly was responsible and claimed responsibility for this attack, that still is not a justification for the United States to strike or invade Iran. Because that is absolutely something that could lead to not just a bloody war with Iran, but World War III potentially. So we, of course, should not go to war with them over oil. But the United States does have a long history of intervening when oil is at stake. If we want oil or oil is, you know, at risk, we intervene. Now, after this attack happened, Donald Trump tweeted, Saudi Arabia oil supply was attacked. There is reason to believe that we know the culprit are locked and loaded depending on verification, but are waiting to hear from the kingdom as to who they believe was the cause of this attack and under what terms we would proceed. So this is another threat to a country via Twitter by Donald Trump. And we're just waiting on Saudi Arabia to give us the go ahead. Say it's Iran and we'll do what you want, Saudi Arabia. Unbelievable. Now, what Donald Trump 
is alluding to here when he says that we're locked and lo loaded, presumably is him saying, we are ready to strike in the event Iran is responsible. If that's what the intelligence points us towards, we'll strike Iran. So in his view, he wants to do something to make sure that he projects strength. He doesn't want to be seen as, you know, this beta male. He doesn't want to appear too weak as he thinks Obama appeared. But at the same time, he is committed to at least being portrayed as a non-interventionist. When that's laughable, he's not. He is a warmonger, perhaps to a lesser extent than individuals like Mike Pompeo or John Bolton, but nonetheless, he still is a warmonger. But he still wants to be portrayed as an anti-interventionist. So it seems like in his view, he thinks striking Iran will suffice, and then he pulls out. No war needed after that. The problem is that Iran has communicated that they would in fact view that as an act of war, and that that would lead to war. But let's talk a little bit more about that after we hear from Donald Trump when he denied that war with Iran is what he wants. Take a look. And I will tell you that was a very large attack and it could be met with an attack many, many times larger very easily by our country. But we're going to find out who definitively did it first. Can we clarify, Mr. President, so you said that you think that Iran is responsible for the attack. Do you think that I, I didn't attack, say that. I, why do you, you say that? that? I said, said that, that we think we know who it was, but I didn't say anybody. But you, you uh, certainly it, it would look to most like it was Iran, but I did not say it the way you said. Do I want war? I don't want war with anybody. I'm somebody that would like not to have war. We have the strongest military in the world. We've spent more than a trillion and a half dollars in the last short period of time on our military. Nobody's even come close. There's nobody that has the F-35. We have the best fighter jets, the best rockets, the best missiles, the best equipment. Uh, but with all of that being said, we'd certainly like to avoid it. Two and a half to three years ago, they were causing a lot of trouble, and we'll see what happens. But uh, we'll let you know definitively, or if there, as you know, there are ways to uh, see definitively where they came from, and we have all of those ways, and that's being checked out right now. Well, you know, there were always conditions, because the conditions, if you look at it, the sanctions are not going to be taken off. So if the sanctions, that's a condition. So, you know, that's why the press misreported it. Uh, the biggest thing you can talk about are the sanctions, and the sanctions are massive. There's never been sanctions put on a country like that, and I think they have a tremendous future, but not the way they're behaving. We'll see what happens in terms of this attack. Uh, Secretary Pompeo and others will be going over to Saudi Arabia at some point to discuss what they feel they're going to make a statement fairly soon. Uh, but they also know something that most people don't know as to where it came from, who did it, and we'll be able to find that out, we'll figure that out very quickly. We pretty much already know. You know, there's a number of ways that you can interpret what Donald Trump is saying there. Um, by saying, I don't want war with Iran, it seems like he thinks a strike in the same way that he struck Syria twice would basically be all that happens. But again, Iran has made it very clear that they are prepared to go to war if they are struck. Now, if we were attacked, let's say Iran bombed Texas, would we just let that go? Absolutely not. We would absolutely be prepared for war, not to be redundant and overuse the word absolutely. But when we're talking about Donald Trump, we are dealing in absolutes because this individual is incredibly volatile. He's unstable. And one minute he could talk about how locked and loaded we are and the next minute talk about how, oh, of course, I don't want war with Iran. But make no mistake about it. If he strikes them, that's war with Iran. That is an act of war, unquestionably. So we don't necessarily know how this is going to turn out. We're watching this unfold fold in real time and de-escalation seems a lot less likely this time around because we see an attack on Saudi Arabia, which is one of our allies, and the United States government is committed to defending our allies, especially if we already are looking for reasons to attack Iran. So any little thing that they do or don't do is the justification that we need to invade. We can't just invade if we have no reason to. So whether we fabricate a reason or take something and attribute blame to Iran for, even if it's someone else, it doesn't matter. The point is there are many neocons in Donald Trump's administration, the military industrial complex, does have an overwhelming amount of influence over a lot of lawmakers, and they want war with Iran because that is incredibly profitable. So we are trying to push back against the prospect of war with Iran, 
within a capitalist system that profits off of never-ending wars. And the situation looks grim. I'll just put it that way. Now, in response to Donald Trump's saber-rattling, you do have the usual anti-war voices speaking out. You had Tulsi Gabbard on Twitter say, Trump awaits instructions from Saudi masters. Having our country act as Saudi Arabia's bitch is not America first. Rand Paul explained how a strike on Iran would be a, quote, big mistake, which is a message that he sent to Donald Trump after Lindsey Graham unsurprisingly told Donald Trump that he must consider an attack on Iran. And Lindsey Graham, I don't think that there's any war that he's ever been against. Like, you literally could say, should we strike Canada? And if that is something that would increase the profits of his donors in the military industrial complex, in that defense industry, he would go for it. This man is a psychopath. He is not stable. So I'm glad that there are a few anti-war voices, even within, you know, uh, at least one in the Republican Party, in Rand Paul, who's willing to push back. However, the problem is that we've gotten to this point where never-ending wars is just the default position, and new wars aren't that alarming to people. There's this emerging bipartisan consensus when it comes to war. And to give you an example of that, Chris Coons, United States Senator in the Democratic Party, had this to say on Fox News. Quote, we have been constantly preparing ourselves for a full-fledged war. Democratic Senator Chris Coons sits on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. He's a busy guy, a lot of topics. Senator, great to see you in person. Great to see you. Senator, uh, if it is tied directly to Iran, mm -hmm. what's appropriate action? Uh, well, first, I want to see I want to see the intelligence. Um, but it seems credible that the Houthis uh, don't have the sort of advanced drones that carried out this crippling strike on Saudi oil facilities. Uh, my hope is that the president will consult uh, with his generals, his diplomats, his advisors will look hard at the intelligence. Iran is one of the, the most dangerous um, state sponsors of terrorism. Um, this may well be the thing that calls for military action against Iran if that's what the intelligence supports. What about people who say, you know, we got our own oil, we don't need that oil as much as we used to, not our problem. What would you say to that? Um, I'd say one of the things that has kept America safe and secure for seven decades is a global network of alliances. Obviously, our alliance with the Saudis has been badly strained uh, by the murder of Khashoggi and by some of the other things that uh, MBS, the crown prince, has done. Um, but this is a moment where Iran is really pushing our resolve and is really testing to see whether we're actually going to stand up. And if there's attacks by Iran on our close allies like Jordan, Israel, or the Saudis, um, we need to take seriously taking action against and I Iran. think it would be great to know that uh, Republicans and uh, Democrats would be uh, behind that. So if the intelligence says that, you know, Iran is responsible, that's a justification to attack Iran. So here's what I will say about this, because I, I don't know what's going to come of all of this. Maybe Trump will try to deescalate. Maybe someone like Tucker Carlson will once again get in his ear. We don't know what's going to happen. But there are two conflicting sides here. You have one side that's overwhelmingly powerful urging and trying to go Donald Trump into war with Iran, knowing that Donald Trump is belligerent and volatile enough to where he could potentially act if the right person says something at the right time. You know, they're trying to use that to their advantage. And then you have the anti-war side, which is small in comparison, trying to do whatever they can to put pressure on lawmakers, to put pressure on Donald Trump. The problem is that, you know, as these things continue to happen, we had the incident a couple of months ago, you know, it seems as if what we're watching is a case being built against Iran. So in the event we're able to escape war with Iran or a strike against Iran uh, in retaliation to this, well, that doesn't necessarily mean that we're out of the woods yet, because Bolton may be gone, but that military-industrial complex, it operates autonomously. It doesn't need John Bolton in Donald Trump's ear to have a substantial influence over Donald Trump. So even if we don't have a strike on Iran, that doesn't mean that we get to rest easily. We still have to be hyper-vigilant, because Donald Trump is someone who is very unpredictable. Again, he threatened Iran and then says, I don't want war with them. So he's sending mixed messages and he's not playing four-dimensional chess. This is not someone who has some type of complex strategy and he's just, you know, trying to convey strength to Iran. This is someone who has no strategy. So that type of 
naivete and just downright dumb fuckery is easy to capitalize on if you are close to Donald Trump. And Mike Pompeo, he's a hawk on Iran. He wants war with Iran. So we just have to watch the situation and hope for the best. But unfortunately, we are going to have to prepare for the worst. Because if anyone's going to attack Iran, Donald Trump, in spite of his anti-interventionist rhetoric, is someone who could potentially be crazy enough to do something like that.